Welcome to my current fleet of motorcycles. I currently own five bikes and I'm getting a lot of questions from people asking, do you still have the GSXR? Where's the H2? What's going on with the Supermoto? Where's the Hypermotard? So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through all of my bikes. We're gonna get them up on the ramp. We're gonna go through them, explain when I bought them, what condition they were when I bought them, what I've done to them during the terms of, of ownership and what my future plans are for all of these bikes. So if that sounds of interest, grab yourself something warm to drink and Chopsy, roll the intro. I thought we'd start this list by taking the bikes I've owned the longest and then working back to the newest. So believe it or not, this is my oldest motorcycle, the motorcycle I've owned the longest. I got this in 2019. This is of course a Kawasaki H2. This is a 2017 version. When I got this bike, it had one mile on the clock. It was basically a, a pre-registered bike been sat in a Kawasaki dealer for a year, just as a display piece. So I got it at one mile on the clock, just PDI mileage, you know, pre-delivery inspection mileage. And it's a completely standard machine, of course. During that four years of ownership, I've actually done a few, or quite a lot of mods to this bike. It's had the full sort of H2R treatment. So it has the H2R upper wings. It also has the H2R lower wings. Still with the drop damage, we'll talk about that in a minute. It has the full Van Diemen exhaust system, which is basically a replica of the H2R exhaust system, all in titanium. These, these systems are incredible. Made in Australia from Japanese titanium. These are beautiful systems. And, and I'm, I'm really pleased to see Van Diemen starting to be more well known as premium exhaust systems. They make a lot of exhaust systems with lots of other bikes. So. I can't recommend these Vandermont systems enough. Absolutely beautiful. The bike's also had some tuning done. This is around 245 horsepower at the back wheel, which is basically just a, a basic tune on these, just a fueling update, just a fueling change. It's not running any more boost, you know, nothing like that. Just, just basically fuel tuning. Last winter, I wanted to make this bike a little bit more comfortable as a road bike. So I set about installing the Kawasaki 20 millimeter risers. So these are actually 20 millimeters higher than the stock uh, clip-ons. It, it, it makes it reasonably comfortable on the road, this. I also installed the Louis Moto seat cover with their premium gold gel. That's made a massive difference to the comfort of the bike. Those two things alone have, have turned this from, you know, an uncomfortable crutch rocket into a machine you can actually spend a day on now. As some of you all know, I actually dropped this bike in the last season. <laughs> um, I've got a video on it, you know, devastated. I've cracked this panel here. I've actually got a new panel. I think I've also cracked the water bottle, the radiator reservoir bottle, which is under this panel. And the inside of this panel has like a, an inner part to it. I think that's also cracked as well. The crankcase is damaged here and the Van Demon is, is scuffed at the end. And this carbon piece still has the scuff marks where it, where it fell over. So I've done nothing with this yet. So this still needs to be put back together and fixed from that drop damage. I mean, it's rideable, but I mean, like I say, the, the, the reservoir behind there is empty because it's all leaked out. I think that's cracked. So I need to crack on, get this machine serviced, change the oil and get all these parts replaced and get it back to tip top condition again. Also, I forgot, I've got Moto Composites carbon front cow. And all of these H2R pieces are also Moto Composites, as are the side panel pieces here as Moto Composites, and the inner pieces, inner fairing pieces are all carbon and Moto Composites, as is actually the mudguard. 
So I've got a few bits and uh, a few pieces of Moto Composites carbon on here, which I really recommend. I mean, me and this bike have been through our ups and downs, what with me damaging the tank in the past. And, you know, we, we've got a bit of history, this machine. And, uh, and I can't believe it's the bike I've actually owned the longest now. I mean, these are starting to be worth good money now. These are starting to go up. And this is probably worth about 24,000 now, which is a fair bit more than what I paid for it unbelievably so you know it's, it's a very special bike doesn't go out very often but while it's sat in my garage appreciating then why well, get rid of it the bike i've owned the second longest is uh, is this one the ducati hypermotard now this is a 2009 bike this is just a part of it the rest of it is scattered around in these cupboards and in the shed. But this is a bike I got more or less exactly three years ago, about three and a half years ago. I've ridden this bike twice, Twi or maybe three times. Maybe I rode it three times. I think I rode it three times, including the test ride when I first got this bike. Unbelievable. The bike was actually in very nice condition, but the engine was quite corroded, which is it's quite... You know, it's not unusual for Ducatis of that time to the paint to start flaking off the engine. So I thought I'd take the engine out, I'll give it a refresh, a bit of rattle can paint job on the engine, bolt it back in again. Well, that's turned into a nut and bolt restoration. Full engine rebuild, ported heads, cams, everything Cerakoted. I've got completely carried away. Now, you know, I've gone so deep into this project, it's now become sort of difficult to pick it up again. The engine's all in pieces up at Nelly's. I'm gonna crack on with this now because this has to be complete before I start on my new project, which we'll come on to in a minute. But uh, yeah, the Takati Hope and Motile, Hope my I've had it three and a half years. I've ridden it three times. It's pitiful, but this bike will be back to its former, or better than its former glory this year. I promise you this will be back on the road this year. Next up on the ramp, we have my KTM SMCR. And I bought this, I didn't buy it. This was a long-termer from KTM in 2020. So I had this as a long-term test bike in 2020. And I knew at the beginning, when, <laughs> when I asked if I could have one of these for 2020, that I'd end up buying it. And that's exactly what I did. End of the season, I said to KTM, they said, can we have the bike back? I said, oh, don't be too hasty. How much do you want for it if I was to buy it? They come back with a figure, which is pretty reasonable, a little bit cheaper than what you could have picked one up for in a dealer, but not not massive discount, but a little bit cheaper. And I said, yeah, I'd have it because I knew I'd run it in really well. You know, I'd really looked after it um, in that time because I knew I was going to buy it basically, and I did. And then we started this full um, project, this this upgrade project on this bike, and this machine basically has everything, more or less everything you can buy for the SMCR thrown at it. First of all, we've got the full titanium Tecmo exhaust with the little expansion header. So full, full titanium system. We've also got the Rottweiler airbox, which is in there, um, intake system, front wheel air vent, P3 carbon skid plate, Tecmo clutch covers, SM Project oil cover, Tecmo uh, swinging arm covers, Motomaster discs, SM Project wheels with the black and orange fade, the Hypermotard <laughs> front caliper. Hmm, I'm gonna have to get a new one of them. Louis Moto seat cover, Vanshee Motorsport fuel cap, Crispy Designs custom sticker kit. Yeah, this bike's basically had everything done on it, but there's one more job we're gonna do to this. And soon, I think it's next week or the week after next, Race Talk, Dale from Race Talk's coming down and we're fitting a thumb brake. So we're going to fit a thumb brake on this and I'm going to be able to have a thumb brake for the rear wheel 
for those uh, those uh, ooh -hoo, ooh -hoo, ooh -hoo, naughty wheelies. So yeah, his thumb brake kit has been installed on this. His thumb brake kit is amazing. So I'm really excited to sort of share this with you. Um, the front brake needs bleeding again on this. It's, I think the MOT is also out on this bike. So this has got to be MOT'd. I serviced at the end of last year before we took this up to see Chris at CJS for the dynoing. Remember the dyno video when Greg had his done? Link at the top. So this is running pretty sweet. This is a bike I will never sell. I will never sell this machine because it's just so much fun and I can't wait to get out. Now Greg's got one, Alex has got one, Womble's got 701. I can't wait to get out on these this year for some proper hoonage. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. There'll be more videos coming on the SMCR. So on to the trusty K8. This is my everyday bike. This is my equivalent of my GS, if you like. This is the bike I do track days on. This is the bike I go out if I've got to go somewhere, you know, as a bit of a, I've got to go to a media day. Or so. This is the bike I use as a day-to-day -day bike, let's call it. I mean, I got this um, end of 2021, I think. Yeah, the end of 2021, end of the season, I picked this up. Um, second hand, I th just, just from eBay, you know, I actually bought it blind. The guy who sent me loads of videos of it because he was based way up north and uh, I bought it blind, which I'd never recommend doing. But when I saw the videos of this, I was like, yeah, it's really nice. But when it turned out, there's a few little areas where you think, hmm, guy didn't point that out to me. So I'd never recommend buying a bike blind, but I did quite well with this one. So this is a 2008 bike, but it's got the, two, the K7 bits of white pieces on the front of the cow. The K8, the K7 stickers, but it is a K8 machine. It has the full arrow system with the twin cans on either side. Um, it's got about 19,000 miles on it, about 19,000 miles on it now, maybe pushing 20,000 miles now. I've got to service this shortly. So that there'll be a whole, I'll be resuming the garage series on this bike very soon. I'm going to remove the cats, fit a link pipe. Then I'm going to send the ECU off to P3 tuning and do one of their postal tunes. So basically it's like a generic, they've, they've tuned loads of these with this spec. I'm going to put a DNA air filter in it and they're going to send these to you off. They're going to put their base tune on this bike, like a postal tune. Unfortunately, they're based in Liverpool, so it's way too far to go to get a custom map. And I'm not really interested in spending out 400 quid on a custom map for this bike. A generic off the shelf map with a, with a cat delete, uh, with this, these pipes, this air filter will be more than enough for me. That'll get rid of the restrictions these have in the first three gears. I'm also going to change the gearing on this bike and fit a smaller front sprocket or larger front sprocket. Can't remember. Smaller front sprocket, I think. And gear it down to make it a little bit more peppy on the throttle. But yeah, there's more to come on this machine. Full service, those bits going on, and then we'll see how we get on with this postal tune from P3 Tuning. But this bike is a fantastic machine. Now, this may be... Was it 2008? This may be getting on for 15 years old now, but this is still, it's still so fast. You take it on a track day, it's handled so well, it goes so well. Things I have done to this bike, for those who sort of watch the build series on this video, is fit the latest GSXR front calipers, and I've also fitted a Brembo RCS master cylinder. Because the weak point on these bikes, and a lot of GSXRs, is the brakes. With that set up, it is still a fantastic machine. And I'd highly recommend anyone to get one of these if they're looking for a sports bike for the road, because this is so comfortable for a sports bike. It's not too extreme. I absolutely love this thing. This again, I think is definitely a keeper. She's gorgeous. So my most recent purchase, this is a 1990 Kawasaki ZXR750 H2 
I said this was a H1 when I first picked this up. If you haven't seen the video about this bike, this is my new restoration project. Um, picked it up uh, in the last week. There's a video at the top if you want to know a little bit more about it. But I thought this was a H1, which was the original ZXR 750. This is actually a H2. Now, as many people pointed out in the video, the H2 has a different swinging arm. It's, on the H1, it's got some bracing here. The H2 has, a, has an updated swinging arm. It's also got bigger carbs. It's got a bit of head work done to it. Um, it's got a bit better mid-range. Um, but yeah, it's, they're basically the same bikes, but this is a H2 which is better really, because it's got those updates. So I'm quite pleased about that. So this bike has about 25,000 miles on it. Um, it's got different clocks on it. So I've had to look at all the old MOTs to find out what the sort of mileage it's got. But 25,000 miles hasn't been started in 10 years. So this is gonna be a bike I'm going to rebuild after the Ducati's done. But what I will do before I start the Ducati, I'll see if I can actually start this, change all the fluids, see if it'll fire up for me. Um, after 10 years of being sat in a damp barn or, or damp garage. But I must say massive thanks to Peter and his friend. It's actually, his fr it's actually Peter's friend's bike. Uh, Peter watched my video, I think it was last year, where I, I talked about my previous bike history. And I said I used to own one of these and I said I'd like to do a restoration on one of these. So Peter sent me a message to say his mate's got one sat in his garage rotting away. Would I be interested in tackling it as a restoration project? And I said, absolutely. So massive thanks to Peter and his friend for reaching out. Because these don't come up for sale very often. Not sort of with this condition with the bodywork, you know, just in need of, of restoration. So really, really massive thanks to Peter for um, making me aware of this bike and, and selling it to me for a reasonable price as well. So uh, absolutely over the moon with this machine. And this is gonna, I'm gonna be reliving my, my teens on this bike, my, li living my twenties at least. I'm, 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 I must've been about 19, I think, when I had one of these. So yeah, I'm gonna be reliving my childhood on the ZXR 750. Hopefully by next season, this will be back on the road and restored over the winter. There we are, thanks very much for joining me for that quick tour of my motorcycles. Now there will be a final garage build video coming. A lot of people asking about the big mural, mural? The big mural I've got on the garage door. So there will be a final episode of the garage series coming. I'm hoping my Craftworks cupboards are gonna to arrive tomorrow, fingers crossed, and I can get everything put back together and we can start on the jobs I've got to do on these bikes because it's now beginning of March, I've got five bikes here. Not one of them is road legal. So I've got a lot of work to do and also want to get on with the Ducati as well. So uh, that's all to come. So if that's been of interest, please consider subscribing below. There'll be more of me this year riding these bikes, working on these bikes and what other, other bikes I may have coming my way during this season. It's gonna, I'm so excited about the summer ahead and the riding season ahead. It's gonna be fantastic. So if you're interested in joining me and seeing what I get up to, please consider subscribing. And that's it. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. See you later. Cheerio. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Ta-ta for now.